timing too. Yep. Because if the initial bonus fruit's still in Pokelam's hand. Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute. Wait. Rob! A minute. Man. I've been bamboozled! Yeah. Me, me, me too. We came here for some villager! Ah! I, I agree. <laughs> Mario Kart 64 Toad. So this matchup is still funny, but not nearly as funny as it could have been. And Sinji already just putting on the pressure. For whatever reason, Pac-Man can just get into his forward edge, falling uppers, um, and, and falling neutral airs, and just really extend a lot of his combo. So he has, like, guaranteed 30, 40 boost on him, too. Oh, yeah. Don't let, the, don't let the zoner agenda fool you. This character is a boxer through and through. Pac-Man just straight up has some of the best close-in normals that you could ever want for a character that wants to keep you at, like, a mile's mm -hmm. distance. Oh, that following now, he tried to set up attack chase, but Pokelem still able to jump out of that position, just sitting in shield so patiently. That's just intense awareness from Sinji, knowing that full armor order isn't enough to break Fire Hydrant. Rolls through, does it himself. We're going to be spacing back here so safely. Sinji just trying to look for his opening in right now. You know, he, that was a really good recognition from Sinji as well. Rob can do nothing to pressure me. I can just charge bonus food, and the longer I go, the better the situation is. So I'm going to force uh, him to pick an option. If there's one thing to expect with this character behind this player, Sinji is probably one of the most well-studied individuals who knows enough about his character that I have met so far in Smash. Who's going to find that up there? <laughs> That's still not enough to protect you from Rob down throw at that percent. Nothing is. No matter how many you like years of experience or knowledge of, of your own character that you have. Ooh. Bit of an interesting trade. You gotta remember just how long F Smash lingers and just how disjointed it is relative to Pac-Man's body. Sinji getting that up tilt extension on the platform. That was really cute. On oh, oh my. Where are we going? <gasps> no! It would have been so cool if we had it too! I like the idea. Oh, no, yeah. The idea was, was really cool because normally, you know, that, that would have covered Taku all out. That would have covered uh, in plays, too. What do wow. you do when the man with the reputation for being the most patient man in any room he walks in ends up mashing on you? Like, what happens then? Also, can we not give Pac-Man the gyro? Look at this. That's not even his item. And, and Sinji's item play fundamentals are just so solid. He, I mean, he's just ready for this as well. It also helps that Pac-Man has a really good item toss. Mm -hmm. So he's able to make good use of anything that's in his hands, be it his own bonus fruit or, in this case, Rob's gyro, which Pokelum hasn't even really had an opportunity to use to pressure. In fact, Pokelum hasn't had an opportunity to pressure at all. He's been playing very reactionary to this Pac-Man the entire time. Mm -hmm. Something I would like to see from Pokelam, Sinji has been doing a lot of neutral get up shield uh, at the ledge because Pokelam has been opting to go through like a lot of gold distance options or a lot of back hills. I just want to see a, a dash up grab at this point on reaction um, just because of like how often Sinji is getting away from the ledge with that one option. That's a very rewarding uh, option to take, but I feel like that's one of those like once a set. Like you really break your opponent's ankles with that and then you yeah. don't get away with doing it again. <gasps> oh no. Yeah, no, we're just gonna stare at each other. Just stare down. Oh! Wow, Sinji's situational awareness that he was so good. Just like to be able to recognize, hey, I think I can get this conversion right now. Um, That's what he looks for. That's what he lives for. I really like how Pokelam, that, uh, that empty hop was so solid because he didn't commit to an option preemptively. All he did was he pressured with his own position and waited for Sinji to pick something else and a beautiful arm loader. Sinji primed that fire hydrant and so Pokelam just took full advantage of that and was able to find that kill. Oh, oh my. There's not a lot of opportunities where the reflecting aspect of arm loader is able to really come into play, <laughs> but this is one of those matchups. Yo, Pokelam's at 191. <laughs> There's a lot happening on the screen right now. <laughs> it's the apple, okay. Yeah. yeah, there's gonna be a lot happening. Both these characters, renowned for their way to box and zone, and sort of meld the two very different styles mm -hmm. together, because their kits just facilitate that. Wow, the way that Sinji's just catching all of these dashings for Pokelam, I blinked 82% and climbing, and this is starting to slowly run away from Pokelam. He needs to be able to find more gentle ways to approach that goal in. Pretty risky. Not finding its mark. Good idea, though. Unfortunately, it's not that fast of a button to be able to box out with Pac-Man like that. Pokelam's still not out of it, though. Let, let us keep in mind that, like, because Pokelam is forcing Sinji to run from corner to corner, that's still a target for Rob at the ledge. 
there's still the chance of getting caught out with arm roller. Oh. Oh no! The gyro doing everything that it needs to and protecting Pokelam on the ground, but not the way that you would actually expect it to. Pokelam right now just sitting so patiently in shield, but when you are a big body and you hold on to it a little bit too long, suddenly... Oh. Down air outwards? Nah. nah. Not with Rob's weight. I like the creativity, but... That move has very funny, like, base knockback. Or, not that it has base knockback, but it's initial knockback. And then it just scales in a very funky way. Um, Apple there is going to be able to take it. I really like the way that Sinji was implementing a lot of jump Apple uh, in this match because typically the way that you want to get in on Rob at like mid to long distance, he was going to be either pressing A, laser, or B, gyro. And the best way to catch him, um, especially if he starts jumping uh, preemptively, is with diagonal down options. Also, keep in mind with how shallow of an angle that is. Mm -hmm. Like, if we could take an opportunity to... Uh, Let's go back to our replay. Yeah, hold on. Bring me back a little bit. Like, you're worried about that kind of space? Hello? That's not something that you typically like, feel Pikachu threatened by. Pikachu and Pichu by. cover that space. No other character is supposed to cover that sharp of a diagonal. But this is the matchup we came here to see, and this is on as best of a stage as we're going to get it. Let's go. Pokemon Lamb has got the signature villager add on small battlefield, which is a stage that allows villager to cover a ton of space with very little commitment, so long as villager is able to battle out from beneath the platforms. Mm -hmm. I really like already how Pokemon is mixing up his recovery in such a way that as soon as he locks Sinji into shield using Lloyd, he air dodges to get back onto the stage. Because it doesn't matter if he connects Lloyd or not, the important part is that Sinji chose the wrong defensive option, tried to block it, and that gave Pokelam the time he needs to be able to get back onto the stage. Like, the size of Small Battlefield, as well as the platform layout, is perfect for Villager to be able to just put himself and projectiles in a space mm. that's going to make coming in on Villager a nuisance. But it's not especially difficult for Villager to just retreat and restart it all over again. For sure, yeah. And as Pac-Man, you really don't have that luxury of being able to throw as many of the bonus fruit uh, from just long distances because if Villager is in a reactable range, wow, he can make he can make so much better use out of it. Oh, absolutely. And on top of that, the stage's layout defensively is really well suited for playing against Sinji. Because now, you don't have to worry about that shallow angle of Apple. Villager's always going to have a little canopy over him by way of the platforms to act defensively. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and just maybe like an overall less reliance to go through a lot of options like jump neutral to be able to initiate means that you're not going to be getting your jumps called out nearly as much. Pokelam trying to set up that ledge trap, but I really like this high recovery attempt from Sinji. Just understands, hey, I'm not going to go to the ledge, but man, side B's got lag. Yeah, the only way to get back to the stage was from that's above. Funny. So that's what I wanted to bring up in the, the, the pregame. While the bonus fruit itself is out, Sinji is not allowed to summon another one. Look at this, look at this play. Look yep. at this play from Pokelam. That was so good. That's the best way to deny bonus fruit as villager. You can keep it in your pocket, and that's going to allow you to freely go for your aerials without worrying about Z-dropping and timing them just right. But if you keep it in your pocket too long, Pac-Man has the ability to summon another bonus fruit. Do you want to deal with two bells on the field? Do you want to deal with a bell and a key? Exactly. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Devin. I couldn't, couldn't have described it in a better way. <laughs> well, uh, Pokemon is just maneuvering around the stage so efficiently, too. Sinji recognizes, like, hey, I need to be the aggressor now, and Pokelam's keep away game is incredible, but just going to back it right through that dash attack, such is the reality with the 9% threshold uh, for projectiles and, and the fact that Villager has a lot of very weak Pokey projectiles. Yes. Oh, uh -huh. not that one! Uh-oh, forward smash, gonna catch at the ledge. The presence of tree making options at the ledge, very dangerous. Also, the fact that wood chip trips is just great. Let's go timber. And honestly, there is no better way to call out neutral get up shield than to set up a tree at ledge like that, because you have a shield break setup. If you go through F smash, it'll be, I, you know, there's, a lot, there's so many interactions happening, you can just kind of keep your opponent locked and, and sitting in shield. Yeah, great attack chase from Sinji, just like, there's, he could cover every single option in that moment. 
Sinji just has to be very fluid with this play. He can't really commit to setting up the trampoline, setting up the fire hydrant, getting which bonus fruit he wants in that given moment. He has to chase Pokéland. Otherwise, committing too hard is going to give Pokémon time to react to whatever's set up and then make it backfire on Sinji. Whether it's taking the bonus fruit, whether it's taking the fire hydrant, whether Sinji just doesn't have a proper place to land because he's playing more of Pokéland's game. Mm -hmm. And I also really like how Sinji is so confident in catching a lot of these uh, retreating Lloyd Rockets from Pokéland. The move has a lot of started up before that hitbox comes out. Villager is in a lot of lag as well. If you're in mid-range, you could just like dash up and grab him for you. Oh, I love this response from the ledge. Sinji not committing hard to a button because he knows he can't get too antsy. There's already a very substantial lead there by Pokéland, and being able to just hold your bonus fruit, wait for the call out, now you don't have as bad of a lead to deal with, but you still have 77%. <gasps> no. How do you answer as Sinji? That was almost a down in, in I, I believe, in Smash 4 that would have killed. Because <laughs> in, that, in that game, oh, but that's not down where we're in. at. Yeah, no, not quite. Sinji was not able to get the full track there, but Sinji. I mean, he's just putting on a lot of damage, and Pokéland's keep away game starting to fail him a little bit. Well, now Sinji's pressured by percentage. He's pressured by percentage and the clock. He knows he has to start picking up the pace. And he also is very aware that Pac-Man has oh, the wow. buttons to do that, because now Pokéland only has less, about a 12% differential between them. And just like that, a 2% differential. Oh, no. And and We are in exact percentages with less than two minutes on the clock. It really comes down to who wins the next neutral interaction. Oh, but Sinji now no longer has bonus food in hand, only going to be able to charge it up a little bit. <gasps> Pokélamb. That's dropping through the platform, baby, and ultimate. It's not easy. <gasps> not able to deny the Galaga in time. Still a very minor lead for Sinji, but... Oh, no. <laughs> This is actually a really good projectile for Villager to have because he doesn't have anything that's very reliable going now, in a straight lateral fast line. I like that Pokélam is just not <gasps> pocketing this. Oh my, what a beautiful tech as well. There's a lot happening at the ledge right now, but Pokélam still manages to be able to get back on. That's not going to be the strong hit of back hit. Only gets that late hit. Such good harassment from Sinji, but he leaps right into up smash. We're going into game three, Dara. Let's go. I popped up. I popped off with you, Pokélamp. Sinji, I love you, but let's go, Pokélamp. <laughs> that was such an excellent jump call out He as was well. fishing so hard with that up smash. Third time was the charm, and right there, expecting Pokélamp to get in the air because that's where we see the constant pressure mm -hmm. of Fair and Bear. Not this time. Yeah, normally, Look at that dumb smile. Normally from here, at this position, this is where Sinji has been consistently catching a lot of these Lloyds because you can sort of run in there, you can be, you can punish it, you can try to grab a uh, villager for it. Uh, just Three, Sinji, two, <laughs> I, I just one, believe Sinji didn't really pick uh, the right option there. It was not at the correct range to be able to space forward. Well, let's see where Town and City takes us in this game. <laughs> Immediately anti-air in much the same fashion, the same exact situation. I think Sinji now well aware that that is a threat that he has to be just beating through. That's one way That was to a do lot it. of hits. That That's was a lot one of one way to do it. Yeah, that was a lot of interactions at once, um, as what this matchup can have. That's already 60% of climbing, but Village Junior, that is a move that you have to respect. It is fast, it is active, and it covers his whole body. But keep in mind the pace that Sinji has adjusted to over the course of these three games. Playing out the more fluid, trap base where you're setting up the fire hydrant, have bonus fruit in tow, just waiting for mm -hmm. your opponent to press the button. It worked really well against the Rob. Then you're playing an equally patient character in the likes of Villager, and now you're forced to get a bit heavier with the buttons. Game three, Sinji swinging! My man's pressing all the buttons mm -hmm. because he can't afford to let Pokemon get that space. Yeah, as soon as Pokelam, like throws outside, we, we don't see Sinji try to back off anymore. He's not dashing back. He's not jumping away. He is going in because that, as much of an opening as it is for Villager, at mid distances, that is your opening to be able to get in. Impeccable the eye from Sinji. How is he going to be able to get back from the ledge? Ooh. Oh, we're riding. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> oh, you crashed into the tree and you're just fine. Able to act out of it much quicker than you'd really expect to. I like the side B uh, attempt, though. Even though, like, Pokélam wasn't able to fully get that stall because Lloyd was already active somewhere else, the, the attempt to just mix up his timing uh, was really solid. And in the worst case scenario, he brought himself back to stage. Although now we're sitting in a position where Sinji has all the time in the world to establish his bonus fruit, and he has to force Pokélam to approach. 
Ooh, I like that Pokey Lamb is this time trying to cover these high recoveries and catches that ledge goal. Beautiful stuff. That would have covered neutral. Get up and get up attack. All right, that's enough up smash. It is not nearly strong enough to do anything to that fire hydrant. Sinji knows that. He threatens the landing and ties us right back up. Yeah, not fully sure about that. Um, you just say, I should get back onto the stage. But I really like a lot of these uh, attempts to whiff punish from Poke Lamb now because these are the ranges where he is normally going for a lot of Lloyds uh, on the ground. So he's just short hopping away and waiting for Sinji to preemptively jump in with a button. <gasps> oh! If he di it up, that would have been really dangerous, even at such a low percentage. Also, big up to Sinji doing this. I, I, as far as I can recall, he is like the first of the Pac-Man to start using Side B as a shield against projectiles. Mm -hmm. And then just heal with the power pellet. It's so goofy. But against an opponent like Pokemon, it really does come in handy. Yeah, that little bit of like chip uh, healing that you can do for yourself. Just honestly, at the end of the day, if it's like 5 or 10 percent less by the end of the, the, the game, that's the difference between Death Percent and not Death Percent. But also, it gives Pac-Man enough time to come back and react faster than he would out of shield, and more explosively out of shield. Pokemon using that Lloyd once again as the way to get back onto the stage. Sinji just gonna respect it, just gonna sit in shield, not gonna try to hold forward. Oh. Has the right idea. And there it is, the F-Smash down smash. You know why? Because F-Smash is, that's right, baby, like negative four, I think. It's, it's safe-ish. <laughs> Just the champ wants to see what the responses are reacting accordingly. Very cute. It's the little bouts of neutral like that that really make the big difference because these characters can both be so explosive. Oh my. <gasps> Pokemon tried to bust out the the bell a little bit too quickly, and as a result, was able to lose it. I believe Villager can just make so much use out of that, especially in hand. The problem is that Sinji's not giving enough time to actually use it, because when you take it out of pocket, it's treated like an item. I really like the way that Pokemon is just controlling the ledge with Tree. He was forcing a lot of these options just by virtue of Tree existing. Sinji was suddenly locked out of recovering blow because that would be an easy two frame to be able to set up uh, for Pokemon. He had to go side, uh, he had to go through the side B, he had to go high, and he got punished. Shinji's shield pressure at high percentage is so good. Like, able to threaten in so many different ways without really overextending, <gasps> blasting through the yep. Lloyd for our last stocks. That gave from Sinji was really smart, because a lot of these long-distance Lloyds from Villager are typically unpunishable, but when you have a projectile that's that strong and can just go right through it, especially when Lloyd doesn't have a hitbox out there yet, you're just chilling. How about the real MVP for Sinji here? He's been healing so much, and it's been calling out a lot of this Lloyd usage, not timing the throw correctly. I think for Sinji, the best option would have been to go for something like a down throw, because that's the longest animation, and it would be able to give you the grab armor that you need. Option out of shield is not much for Pokemon, but he's maintaining his little bit of such a good position. Pokemon can't really afford to overextend too much. Because look at that, you immediately lose the percentage lead you have. And now those little bits and pieces of using Power Pellet as a shield to your Lloyd and your Fares, now it matters. He's healed so much. You've it got actually... a minute and a half left on the clock, and you're healing just enough oh, no. to make the difference. Pokelip side beat, no. He you was not able ahead. to get the momentum cancel. That was so tragic. Sinji, it's always the job locks at 60% at that get him. Gets him every time. <laughs> he had to really fight through a wall to make it happen, too. And there it is again. Like... That, that Galaxian was, was pretty important for, for Sinji. He was a little bit too late on its usage, but it's these short-range Lloyds that really tend to be the death of, uh, of Pokelam here. Because at, at this range, I mean, when you're, when you're this close to villagers, you can do anything that you want because... <laughs> We're just gonna... No, <laughs> no! <laughs> You did this. <laughs> Just keep in mind, you did this. <laughs> Dehance! Dehance! <laughs> During this little space, you either get, like, <laughs> annihilated by Lloyd, or Lloyd just doesn't do anything. Which is what we ended up seeing. Look at that! Look at that! Yeah, Lloyd's not active. <laughs> Lloyd takes a long time to be active, even though the projectile comes Pepper's out really fast. Staring you down, like, 
Ugh. You messed up. Even though the you projectile messed up really bad, comes out really mash. quickly in of itself, and Village, you can just. Oh, oh man. Bop. And that's where it spells disaster because Sinji had a perfect follow up following mm -hmm. that. I tried to throw down some analysis, man. Boop. I tried my yeah, best. Yeah, and then look what you did. <laughs> Just the one jab. Doesn't want to throw away the situation. Yeah, no, that's too enhanced. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that that would be the frame that it paused on. Yeah, I that's didn't how think... it looks. I lost it. Like, all of my mental <laughs> composure up until that very moment. You tried to esports so hard. I wanted to talk about...